If the man in the motor car is the key image of the 20th century, then the automobile crash is the most significant trauma. The car crash is the most dramatic event in most people's lives, apart from their own deaths, and in many cases the two will coincide. Are we just victims in a totally meaningless tragedy? Or does it in fact take place with our unconscious and even conscious connivance? Each year, hundreds of thousands of people are killed in car crashes all over the world. Millions are injured. Are these arranged deaths, arranged by the colliding forces of the technological landscape, by our own unconscious fantasies about power and aggression, our obsessions with consumer goods and design, the overlaying fictions that are more and more taking the place of reality? It's always struck me that people's attitudes towards the car crash are very confused, that they assume an attitude that in fact is very different from their real response. If we really feared the car crash, none of us would be able to drive a car. I know that my own attitudes to the crash car are just as confused the distorted geometry of this tremendously stylized object, let's face it, the most powerful symbol of our civilization, seems to pull at all sorts of concealed triggers in the mind. The postures of people in crashed vehicles, deformed manufacturer's styling devices, crashed General Motors cars look very different from crashed Ford. The stylizing of the instrument panel, which after all is the model for our own wounds. Driving around, each of us knows what is literally the shape of our own death. Regaining consciousness, she stared at the blood on her legs. The heavy liquid pulled at her skirt. The bruise under her left breast reached behind her sternum, seizing like a hand at her heart. She sat up, lifting herself from the broken steering wheel, uncertain for a moment whether the car windshield had been fractured. Against her forehead, the strands of blood formed a torn veil. Above her knees, a hand moved toward the door lever. As she watched, the door opened and she fell out. Lifting herself, she held tightly to the car, feeling the pressure of the door sill against her hand. Turning, she stared at the waiting figure of the man she knew to be Dr. Tallis. I remember seeing some films on television of test crashes a few years ago. They were using American cars of the late 50s, a period, I suppose, when the American dream and American confidence were at their highest point. Metering coils trailed out of the windows and they had dummies sitting in them. They were beautifully filmed. They filmed them beautifully because they wanted to know what was happening. They weren't interested in the aesthetics of the thing. These cars were in head-on collisions, right-angle collisions and side swipes and ploughing into other structures like utility poles. One could see four feet of metal suddenly become one foot. Filmed in slow motion, these crashes had a beautiful stylized grace. 
The power and weight of these cars gave them an immense classical dignity. It was like some strange technological ballet. Looking at these films and thinking about the strange psychological dimensions they seem to touch. They seem to say something about the way everything becomes more and more stylized, more and more cut off from ordinary feeling. It seems to me that we have to regard everything in the world around us as fictional, as if we were living in an enormous novel, and that the kind of distinction that Freud made about the inner world of the mind, between, say, what dreams appeared to mean and what they really meant, now has to be applied to the outer world of reality. All the structures in it, flyovers and motorways, office blocks and factories, are all part of this enormous novel. Take a structure like a multi-story car park, one of the most mysterious buildings ever built. Is it a model for some strange psychological state some kind of vision glimpsed within its bizarre geometry. What effect does using these buildings have on us? Are the real myths of this century being written in terms of these huge, unnoticed structures? More exactly, I think that new emotions and new feelings are being created, that modern technology is beginning to reach into our dreams and change our whole way of looking at things and perceiving reality, that more and more it is drawing us away from contemplating ourselves to contemplating its world.